I'm Joey Williamson. I'm a horticulturist with the Clemson Extension Home and Garden Information Center. Today we'll look at two fantastic but mild pepper cultivars and a unique cherry tomato that make a wonderful addition to the home vegetable garden. The first vegetable I'd like to show you today is a pepper called the Pasilla Bio Pepper. And this is a pepper that we grew from seed. Uh, they have to be grown inside in a greenhouse or in your home. And in the upstate, they need to be planted typically outside in the yard during the month of May. So one has to plan ahead on how long it takes for these peppers to germinate and to grow large enough to transplant to the garden. These peppers take about 78 days to reach maturity. Uh, they're very long and slender type peppers. They're thin walled and they become a very dark color of green, almost a blackish green color at maturity. They do have a lot of seeds inside. They will reach lengths up to eight to 10 inches long. So they make quite a large pepper. They're often used dried in cooking where they provide quite a smoky rich flavor to uh, sauces. These peppers are relatively mild. They have a Scoville uh, heat unit rating of about 250. And what the Scoville rating uh, means is uh, it's, a, it's the degree of hotness of these peppers. A rating of zero would mean no heat at all, like those in a bell pepper. But this scale can go all the way up into the hundreds of thousands or higher for peppers such as habaneros. So having a, having a Scoville rating of only 250 is pretty mild, and one can even eat these from the plant. The next pepper I'd like to show you today is the New Mex Big Jim Pepper Cultivar. Now this is a variety that was developed at New Mexico State University and is one of the largest of the chili type peppers. These fruit can reach up to 10 to 12 inches long and turn bright red at maturity. And these make an excellent pepper for making chili rellenos. The plants typically reach about 30 inches tall and they usually will make about 24 to 30 fruit per plant. Uh, the, the fruit do typically mature at about the same time on the plants and it takes about 80 days to maturity. Uh, these, these peppers have a Scoville rating of about 500 to 1000. So these are a little more hot than are the Pasillas I showed you before. But if one removes the seeds and the membranes from inside the, the peppers, this can uh, drastically reduce how hot these peppers will be. But they're still not that hot on the relative scale. Last but not least is the black cherry tomato. There are lots of different black type tomatoes and they're known for their rich, sweet tastes. And this cherry tomato is no exception. This cultivar takes on somewhat of a blackish brown color at maturity and they become ripe in about 65 days, which is a little less than for most larger style tomatoes. As you can see, this plant uh, forms its tomatoes in clusters, and this tomato fruit is considerably more resistant to blossom end rot, which has been a very bad problem this year on many tomatoes. This tomato cultivar is, is called an, an indeterminate growth tomato, and this means that this tomato keeps growing and growing uh, without limits and continues to set fruit all the way up versus a determinate type tomato that usually stops at about three and a half to four feet tall and sets all its fruits at one time. These are spread out over the season. In growing this type of indeterminate tomato, I've used uh, large tomato stakes. They're like two inches by two inches. They're redwood stakes in order to support the heavy weight of these taller plants because sometimes posts will break if they're too thin. I've used a Florida weave system to hold up these taller plants. And this is where strings are run at different heights where they're woven in and out to pinch and support the plants. This Florida weave system is an excellent way to trellis tomatoes, peppers, and basil plants to keep them off the ground. There are many unusual tomato and pepper cultivars available, but you'll find the selection is tremendously greater if you'll order from seed catalogs rather than relying on the few selections available at your local garden center or farm supply store. Of course, it means you'll have to start out with seeds to produce your plants, but the wide selection that's available will make this well worthwhile. For more information on gardening, landscaping, insect and disease problems on your plant, visit the Home and Garden Information Center website at www.clemson.edu slash hgic.